a roughly 40 acre A1 zone parcel. The undeveloped parcel is located on Ford Shock Road, Route 618, and identified on Madison County tax map as 42-19. Ms. Megan, would you fill us in on that? Yes, um, so Mr. Helmy, uh, I met, has been, uh, we've been talking for, uh, he's on the go to meeting. Uh, I think can you hear us? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I can hear you. Okay, good. He's, we've been talking uh, for a year, uh, maybe uh, a little shorter than that, about a proposal of some type of a, of a camping slash glamping uh, facility. Uh, he has a lot of experience as a developer. Uh, and as you can see from the kind of brochure, uh, some of the broad brush uh, topics and things that, uh, that his Sort of business and his model is about. I also passed an email that he sent to me this afternoon. Uh, he, he recently uh, was approved for something, and uh, you know, he can talk a little bit about this in Shenandoah County near Bryce Resort. Um, something kind of similar to this, a uh, little bit different dynamic and location in Shenandoah. Um, so basically, what we're doing here is just getting some uh, initial feedback. Uh, the, this parcel. Here, uh, of course, is located on Ford Shop Road, right on the Robinson River. Street. The property has not been out there. I'm familiar with the area. I've never been to that particular parcel. Um, I know we, this commission, and I think everyone here is kind of familiar with glamping, um, and it's uh, something that I literally talk to someone every day, some uh, some level uh, or not, about people who are interested in that. It's been in this type of um, activity. Um, you know, some of you, you remember the, uh, the hearing and it's been a few years ago from Chris Array. Uh, that my, and my only kind of concern uh, to Ahmed, and he's been very nice to work with, and I think he's very thorough and savvy developer that has uh, good ideas. And just the only concern I've told before we move forward is I want to get some initial feedback, but uh, I've been kind of open a few times and I'll talk to some of you on the commission is that we sort of have a niche here of uh, being, I, I think, pretty open-minded to these proposals. Um, but I think most of them, and as I just told Ahmed, I think most of them have been fairly small scale in nature. Uh, you know, we're looking at anywhere from the uh, three or four units uh, to, you know, in some instances, maybe uh, a little larger. But uh, I think that one of the kind of the issues here, um, and, you know, he can explain more what he's you know, what, what it would be about is that we really do over the, the size of the plus or minus 40 acres, so we do have a lot of density here. Uh, and that, you know, I've kind of told them that that's my concern. Uh, so just, again, just kind of an open conversation here to talk to uh, uh, Ahmed a little bit and learn a little bit from him. And of course, we have the slides here, and, and I'll turn it over to him, and he can kind of have a back and forth here. So Ahmed, is anything that you want to... Well, I'll turn it back to the chairman here. Let you kind of lead it, but at any time you want to let him come in and talk a little bit, I'm sure he'd be happy to give us some more information. Uh, well, before we move to that segment, uh, does anyone on the commission have a further question for me? I do. So um, I was kind of looking for uh, not really so much an ordinance, but I was looking for something in here to identify as glamping. <clears throat> I found uh, temporary housing, and I found um, primitive campground. Where does this fall in, in the list? Yeah, it's, you know, we used to call it rural resort. I think that's probably a better name for it, but it'd be an event venue, even though and it, part of an event venue is camping. Even though he's not, you know, in this state, it's not really an event, you know, in, in, a, in a true sense, it's not an event venue. It's really just sort of looking to utilize the camping, glamping portion um, of what is a special use in A1. Um, so that's that's the way I would interpret it. So where does this fall into? Where, where, where does this fall? I say a special use for an event venue. Uh, event venue. But, but not, again, he's not really, uh, you know, if, if, if we get to the point where he's 
applies for a special use permit, I, I think that we would probably happily remove the, the event portion of it. Uh, we've really just looked into utilize the, the, the glamping. Um, that, that's what he's looking to utilize, so that, and that is allowable for him to go use it. I mean, there could be some events there, some small scale events, uh, but again, he's really just looking for the rustic glamping, camping type experience. Yeah, uh, William, that, I've been, I'm glad Mike brought that up because that's a point I've been trying to make ever since the first presentation that he brought to us. Uh, the term event, the, the event venue doesn't require that the applicant do all of these things. Okay. It's simply the umbrella so that he, that, you know, he's talking about glamping, which is an event venue. He's talking about a restaurant, lodge, slash lodge, whatever, event venue. The fact that he doesn't plan on, hopefully, having a 500-person concert doesn't mean that the event venue is not the appropriate uh, special use application. That's, that's why I've been repeatedly asking him why he thinks he's a nuisance to call him about. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think because, you know, uh, explicitly he's not really looking, and that's, you know, going back a couple years ago, you know, it's not a big deal, but, I, I, you know, we changed that event venue. I, me personally, and have been there for a few years now, I sort of, I sort of like the rural resort. I think it has a charm. Some people have problems with the rural resort. Now we're kind of here, we kind of have a problem with the rural resort. <laughs> you know, so, uh, regardless, I think he's, I think he said it perfectly. He's not on the So going forward, I suggest that we simply say this is a special use application for a event venue, and that glamping is right now the primary. I'm also, as you mentioned, very concerned about the density of 70 and cent on less than forty acres. All right. Any other comments or questions on the planning? Yeah, I, Lincoln, would you explain this? Uh, I haven't counted um, the number of little sites, but uh, would you explain? Right. So right off Fort Shop, you have an entrance, uh, and if you look at you know maybe the actual hard copy in your package, you can see that it's showing a, a parking area right there on Ford Shop. Um, and then you would have a those black lines sort of uh, kind of follow the contours of the property. That would be um, you know a, a, a graded gravel road, you know, maybe not much similar than, than what the rural uh, sort of uh, roads slash uh, private drives in the county. Uh, and then uh, along that, you would see the, the glamping sites, um, the campsites. Uh, and again, Annette can be a little more specific as, as far as what each specific site would look like, but it's very similar to the proposal that we, at least my interpretation is what we saw from the Sort of right there on Duet Road last year, like four, but you have a platform, uh, uh, you'd have a some sort of a tent structure, uh, and, and you also intend to have a, you know, a bathroom, uh, you know, quote unquote, facilities in each each tent. So, um, you know, as far as the structure, that's something that you know, can come if we get to the special use phase, talk to the building official and get you know more details on that, but. So that would be the tent, and then it would, you can see it kind of meanders through the property, follows the ridges and the contours, and then terminates, and you come back out. And we, we've had an initial conversation, we had a meeting last week with the emergency services to talk about access, and, and again, we, we have an idea, uh, and I think that I talked to Gavin and uh, Brian Gordon, and, uh, I think there's an understanding of how, you know, if there is an emergency there, that you know, it, it can be accessed, and it really could be accessed by those uh, by those quote unquote roads that are in the uh, proposed. Um, so what what is the stuff uh, on the left? Right, they, I mean, yeah, right, and 
this area as a parking area. And again, this is very conceptual uh, to me at this point. So we have par parking area here. We have a, uh, looks like a, a lodge. Uh, I'm sorry, a lodge would be right in this area. It's just hard to see. I kind of looked at the, uh, the hard copy. And then we have the, the lantern. And again, it's taller. This is right here. Showing 70 units on this, so. Um, and, and, and again, oh. I'm sorry, but can you say that again? You know, I would be happy to talk. Yeah, we'll, like that. Right, we'll, we'll get to, we can get to uh, that, we'll just go over this. They're done with me. I don't know if y'all are familiar, I mean, Ford Shops Road feeds off Beantown, coming off 15. Um, you're familiar with the Robinson River, so how that's oriented, you can see the river and the, that kind of red, dark lines on it there is the road. So you go from an agriculture area, just beyond that, about a half mile, you start into the density. And then it feeds on down, Ford Shop turns into Meander, so that's density. The entrance is actually uh, it's a dark line. It looks like it doesn't touch the road there, but that's where you would actually come in as a circle, and that's your drop-off point. So the black delineation you see is, is the pathways or cartways or whatever we're going to call it to each of the campsites. The little lines, I know it's hard to see, the little lines that look like parking lines, that is for each of your campsites. Um, and there's a couple of drain fields being, being proposed, but I just wanted to basically give you some some orientation of where it's at, and the, the only access shown in that drawing is that drop off point as you come in. Where's the parking? Where's your parking? Your, your parking, it's, it's, oh, I thought those were buildings. <laughs> that, that's the parking area. I don't care what you do. Jonathan, is this part of property and part of the old good old farm? Or I'm not sure about the good. I'm not sure about the get off on. I, I know the, the Penhollers uh, family yes. okay. uh, is the current owner. Uh, and and, and Amid can speak to this. I believe he's the potential buyer. Um, so, you know, obviously the concept of this may hinge on purchasing, but it is uh, within uh, the Penhaller family. Lincoln, I guess from my perspective, the philosophical question is um, uh, uh, does, what are the county's interests with respect to the, and th this, is, this is a situation, I lived in D.C. for right in, in, in town for 50 years, it was far more dense than, than the dense community in which I lived. Um, uh, you know, and I question why anybody would want to do this, but uh, then I question uh, if somebody wants to put their money in this, uh, what's, should we care? How do you respond Well, it, it's a land use change first and foremost, so that's, I mean, the, the, the right. obvious that it requires, that. It requires yeah. to go through uh, plan commission, right? For philosophically, uh, I mean, yeah, it, it's dense, and maybe to a certain degree, it sort of looks like you would leave the suburbs and come out to a suburban campsite. Um, uh, you know, but Ahmed knows the market, and he's done a lot of research, and feels like this is something that can be successful. Uh, you know, there's always the economic development. Uh, tourism is important to the county. I just you know, just my observation is um, when I talk to people and have these initial conversations with people, I, I you know, I, I want people to just feel like they can come bring their ideas here. You know, whether we, uh, whether maybe I think it's a good idea or not, uh, I want them to be able to do that. But I'm quick to point out that I believe the orientation of the county and the plan commission, the board, and, uh, are probably for things that are a little less lower impact and uh, probably just generally smaller in scale. Um, it doesn't mean that people, you know, that maybe there's something that's something that 
the size couldn't work, but I, I do think it's challenging when you when you do that. Just thinking if this was a if this was a parking lot here, and then a park here, and the and the sites are out free, like you say, are there going to be like golf cart transportation to the sites? Uh, we know that if we're going to park there, people are not going to drive to them. I surely would think that somebody's not going to walk all the way to that last campsite. Right. I, and I may can talk to this when, you know, but my understanding is that there'd be some, you know, golf carts, some of those type of off-road vehicles that would be at the lot or shuttle people back and forth as, as needed. So each one of these legal um, glamping I'm pretty sure it's two, but yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. Um, <clears throat> one thing, if, if I know where this is uh, very well, um, and also it's a good spot for coming off of um, Oak Park Road, or you know, you can come from a variety of places. I travel those roads all the time. Um, I mean, it's a great spot to feel like you're getting away from the congestion of a city, and yet, and so I know the sites look really, really close, but I've been camping a few times with great big, great big campers that cost a whole lot more money than <laughs> my car does, and they're very close. They're very close in a lot of those places. I mean, you're almost at your neighbor, so you bring your own, you know, screen or whatever. Um, I'm sure that that will be taken into consideration if this developer is putting these close together that you won't feel like you're eating your neighbor's food while you're, you know, at your sites. I mean, I don't think if we haven't been to one of these places, we can conceive, even possibly conceive of what it might look like. You know, my eyes were quite open by taking an $80,000 camper to a place that <laughs> I couldn't barely step outside without, you know, so it's interesting how these work. The people pay for it and they want it, and they want to come out where it's, it's a beautiful spot. And Robinson River, unless it's flooding, is a beautiful river. Beautiful river. It's really, really nice. Yeah, that, that was my impression when I saw this building. It looks like an RV park. Well, but that's, it's, you know, he's not going to build something. No one would build something. I wouldn't think that they are not going to make money at what they're doing and making it so that it is appealing to The impact on the county as far as money, Tracy. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Lots and lots and lots of all yeah, kinds of funds time. coming to you. It's and not sorry, anyway. I see that they've got a designated green field, but I don't see anything on this potential site plan for water. So you're talking about a great demand of water. <laughs> and we're trying not, to play. Not advised to drink from that. I think Orange would be upset with you. Won't they do there? You know, you're coming from Madison down. So yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, we I'm think about it. Any, any other, other questions yeah. on that? Right, any questions? No. Okay. Any plans, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just brief reference. Our neighbors to the south have a, not quite a comparable, but they have a 144 unit. Site that I believe is still at the Session Use Permit stage is called Sojourner Glamping. Mm -hmm. You may want to mm -hmm. take a look at that to get some insights as to what this may, you know, what may be envisioned here. Because I think I think Ms. East is right. We, we're seeing more and more of these types of things, so there must be some sort of market for this. The question becomes, you know, how much density? You know, if anybody wants to move to the country, uh, I think that's what you would call McCoy, Virginia. <laughs> People who wanted to get out of D.C. and finally get into a rural area. Uh, I'm not sure it works. <laughs> we can't keep all of them there. Right. Any other no offense to McCoy. <laughs> the, the, the only 
the only other observation I would make with the league of is that you get all these people of these glamping uh, facilities and they're going to want some entertainment. Um, these are city people that presumably <laughs> they're going to say, now, here we are, what do we do? Learn how to play the banjo. <laughs> <laughs> Any other uh, comments? Okay, we have the uh, representative. Yeah, yeah. Ahmed, do you want to kind of give a few thoughts here? And yeah, yeah, you know, we have to that. Uh, is, is there a possibility to prepare a speech? Let's talk to our technical advisor here. He might be able to help you out. Sir, I will make you the presenter and you can share your screen from GoToMeeting that way. Okay. Uh, can you see this? Yes, sir, we can see it. Give me just a second. I have one more. And there we go. Um, so, so just to give you an idea why why we're doing this campaign. Uh, we we visit our campus office in the area and we, we I'm involved in other projects uh they blasted upstate New York, also uh Cascades, New York, Yosemite, California. Um and um we, we think there's a lot of potential in this area, unrealized potential. And the reason I say that is that uh we were the first to, not the first actually, but we're, we're, we're probably we're more advanced than other special use permits in terms of glamping. Uh, we're moving ahead with, 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 with uh, our project in Shenandoah County. We got, a, we got an approval there last year. We, uh, we did a great job with, with, the, with the community. We even got better with support, which was unheard of in Shenandoah County. At least that we get better support, not uh, supporting our projects from the community. Um, um, Getaway right now is working with us to develop the property. They have, I mean, there's another successful outpost in Green County for Getaway. So I think this DC is underserved. Uh, DC is a very big market. Uh, Shenandoah is a national park. Gets more than I think 1.2 million visitors a year. Madison County has um, a lot of tourism attractions. I would say primarily is wine country. Uh, so we think our, the target market. Uh, that's primarily the DC market, secondary, I'd say, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, and other metropolitan cities, including Richmond, are underserved markets when it comes to glamping, which has skyrocketed in the past uh, three years. 90% occupancy rates across the nation. Uh, um, average daily rates are $250 to $200 a night for these uh, luxury tents. Um, so it, I think there's a lot of potential. Again, we're the ones who will be taking the financial risk. But I think Madison County is very, very promising. Uh, zooming in on the property itself, I think it's a very special property. Uh, uh, we have a river, and that's, that's very unique. We can create great experiences around the river without, I know we wouldn't be building structures close to the river because of the south zone, but pathways, uh, you know, view sheds. Um, also, the property has boulders on it, has beautiful rolling hills, amazing views of the mountains. Uh, it, it gives you this rural look and feel, so uh, we believe it is very promising. I know Ligon has stressed on the density aspect of the project, the fact that it's 70 tents. Um, and I know Madison has this rural character, and it wants to maintain this character, yet I think our, our strategy as developers, our principles, are very much aligned with that. Uh, so though it is 70 tents in town, the way we develop our strategy, uh, and I would like to share with you, focus on that specifically in this conversation. So that is, just, just before I move to uh, our strategy in terms of development, that is a picture from the site of Robinson River, as you see. Uh, also, the next slide shows the mountain from the property itself. It's amazing. I, I would believe in the fall and spring, it would be even you know, more attractive, beautiful area. Um, and the reason we wanted to, we put this property under contract and talked to the owners, by the way, the owners, yes, you're right, they, they own quite an amount of land around this property too. Uh, um, 
So, so uh, when we shared with them, and they're very temperamental, very attached to the land, when we shared our vision, they were very much excited to entertain selling the plaza because they believe we add to the park. Uh, so, uh, if, I, if I understand really our, our investment strategy, and I think it's very much aligned with the rural character of Madison County, it is a, what we call uh, D, which is do very please, the name of our uh, shop, is equal to C, which is community, plus three E, which is environment, elegance, and economy. Uh, and if I may just share with you that strategy, just you know, go in more detail about the strategy. Um, uh, in terms of uh, community, we work very closely with the community. Uh, we have proven success in the San Andrea project, um, especially with body neighbors who are going to be more critically impacted by the, by the project. We do add voluntary conditions, and especially to, to meet their needs. That includes five times um, indirect lighting systems, centralized parking, so we don't have the guests roaming the property with their motor, with their vehicles, with their cars. There is a designated area for them to park the car. Then they are, uh, we, put, we, we take them to their tents with electric golf carts, and then they want to walk. And that's why the design of, of the property uh, is done in a way where once you enter the property and you check into the lodge, and I can give you an idea what's in the lodge uh, later on, but uh, you check in, you park your car, and then a, a staff member will take you uh, with, 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 with a luggage, uh, with a car uh, equipped to carry luggage to your to your tent, and onwards you would mostly be walking and next to you the cars to move around. That, and that is, uh, so no, no more vehicles roaming the property, um, we also do not have public events uh, or concerts, uh, and if there is a need for a wedding, the criteria is you have to reserve the whole property, the whole the whole property to have a wedding on. We don't just you know it's, we don't have these day events on the property. Uh, no no walk-ins for the restaurants. It's primarily servicing our guests. That's about it. Um, and our on-site activities are very in tune with nature. It's like stargazing, um, bird watching, meditation. So this, our guests basically want to escape DC, the hustle and bustle of New York City or Philadelphia, and come enjoy unplug and unwind. So they're not into late, you know, late night partying, uh, you know, loud music, and that's where I think we're very much in tune in terms of. Our concept and rural character of Madison County, although it is 70. So I think 70 is, is a large number, but I also think the way we impact the environment and the community uh, should be factored in. Uh, I also want to stress out on the environment. We, we're very adaptive in our development approach, we're very light on the land. Um, our tents are built are, are on platforms that stand towards have minimum invasion, or like the foundations are very, very shallow. We don't go dig deep. Uh, the way we, we, we work with design our circulation system, meaning the roadways and the, 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 the trace systems, uh, the wide roads that serve, you know, our you know, like vehicles and you know the full fledged fire trucks. And yes, we did have a conversation with the fire department. Uh, are all right in, in the first. Say one third of the property right next to the bridge, uh, and uh, once you go inside, the property is all nine-foot gravel roads, primarily uh, consumed or used by um, golf carts. Uh, or maybe it would carry. No, maybe we would make sure it's designed to carry a brush truck in case of an emergency. We also have. Uh, we, we we usually plan to have an emergency response van, and our staff would be trained on it, and we will have a designated EMS golf cart designed for such emergencies um, in, case, right before, in case there's an emergency and uh, we would be acting as the first responder. So that's why we, we, we work on having very narrow nine-foot uh, trails throughout the property, and these are the ones that connect to the tents. Um, when we design our circulation system, we, we, we go with the contours and the topography of the land. That way we minimize grading on the property, so we don't damage the land. Um, the way we, we, we design, uh, uh, when it comes to tra 
that book, I want to focus on something that is trapped up against seven defense and means quite a few cards checking in and checking out every day. But observing from experience, we have very limited uh, uh, traffic, usually uh, based on traffic studies that we did elsewhere. Uh, our guests would check in usually at the peak period is 1 p.m. and it's usually around seven cars entering, 11 exiting during that period. Also, checking out around, or coming in from their, you know, from their daily shifts around 5 p.m. And it's around 15 entering, 8 exiting based on the density of seven students. And our guests really that like, have breakfast in the morning at the lodge, they don't stay in the lodge. They usually take their car, either go hiking, drive the skyline, go to a winery, enjoy some local restaurants. Then if they come back from the evening, have lunch, you know, sit around the fire pit, have a drink or two, and then go to sleep. Our quiet time is really around 10 or 11 p.m. Um, so, so they're not, they're, there are no multiple foot stacks and four bedrooms to store on the property, and that minimizes the load on the road. I did talk to Willis um, in DDoT, and he did say the side distance and the width of the road allow. We might need to do a commercial entrance, but uh, other than that, the best side distance, the way that, that the, the road is designed and prepped will allow this kind of, uh, this kind of uh, outpost or this kind of project on the property. Um, in terms of elegance, we really are my are designed to beautifully blend with the existing natural elements. This property has amazing topography, amazing views, boulders, has a river, it has, uh, it doesn't have much vegetation on it, but we also add to that by we're trying to augment the charm of the land with our architecture and landscape design. Um, I'm, I'm very confident that you know this this outpost will be a landmark in Edison County, uh, like the ones that are being developed across the nation. It is a booming industry. There's so much demand for it. Uh, usually, with this kind of project, we'd be investing 15 million dollars, give or take, of course, depending on, on many unknowns at this point, like the septic systems, the wells, and so forth. But it will be a 15 million a 15 million dollar investment for these seven tents. Um, in terms of economy, the reason we want seven tents is this kind of hospitality requires um, numbers. The amount of infrastructure and roads and um, common facilities require more stay dimensions. If we go below that, usually it's a very challenging, uh, uh, very challenging uh, project from a financial standpoint. And I think. Uh, I believe you, as the planning commission, do want successful projects. I don't think you you don't want to be wasting your time with a project that maybe gets especially use permit that never materialized because no one wants to give us money for it, or whether it's equity or debt. Uh, I also think that you want us to succeed. You don't want us to build a property and then abandon it in a couple of years and just be property abandoned and uh, basically even the local economy doesn't benefit. Uh, we, we very much focus on what we call uh, the backward linkage in the economy. We source locally. We very much focus on hiring locals, probably we'll be hiring around 40 employees uh, between part-timers and full-timers. Uh, we try to you know, uh, source from surrounding universities for internships. Um, and also, of course, the tax money uh, uh, is, is also quite significant. So, so having said so, if, if, if I have, do I have like five more minutes? Or am I taking too long? Uh, I'm at... No, you're doing great, I think. Uh, one question that we uh, just had. Could this be year round, do you anticipate, or just kind of being a, a March through November kind of thing? How do, you, how do you anticipate that? It is a March through November kind of uh, pro uh, uh, project. Uh, I mean, uh, seasonality makes a difference. Uh, given the type of uh, uh, accommodation that we have, the tents, uh, they are insulated tents. There is climate control on each and every tent. There's an entry bathroom and everything. Yet, there's so much you can do to control climate in the winter. Plus, demand in this area really drops in the wintertime. Uh, so, it is, it, it is a season. We try to extend the season as much as possible. But, uh, <laughs> I'd say November will be, this is when we, when we close and, and then we open in, in, in March or April. Probably March. Any 
Anyone on the planning commission have a question? How many, how many people are allowed per tent? I'm sorry? How many people are allowed per tent? So it ranges the, 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 the tent size is ranging between 150 square feet to 600, you know, 600 square feet. So they range between two to four individuals per tent. That's, that, yeah, that's the limit. So you, you are, you're anticipating uh, different sizes of, of tents for the glamping? Because your exhibit oh, shows all the same. Yeah, different sizes of tents. So it brings the people to 150 to 200 square feet. Any other questions? I have one for Tracy. We will collect transient oxygen tax off of this? Yes. <laughs> yes, we will. I'm sorry, I, I can't hear. But it was just asking if, uh, of course, transient oxygen taxes would be a, uh, that would be sort of the main, for the, from the county of revenue, which would be the transient oxygen, the monthly transient oxygen tax. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? It, you know, Sort of from my experience, uh, I think it's, I think Ahmed has, Matt brings up a good point. He, he, he does have a lot of experience. And he's got a, a proven track record. Um, and my, my intent here was to get this, just so we get some feedback. And you know, I, I know it's not a vote, but you know, it, it, it's just one of these things that's a non-starter. I think a lot of that comes back to, to feedback in the community. Uh, you know, what, and maybe uh, one of the things from a lesson we might have learned a few years ago is uh, maybe if Ahmed is interested in this is to, it doesn't have to be a planning commission thing, but I would be more than happy to facilitate some sort of a, uh, a community meeting with that, just to put it out and say, look, you know, one afternoon, if you want to come and, and, and talk to Ahmed and his folks and sit down and talk in an informal uh, way, that might be another step in this process. And, get an idea of what the folks in that neighborhood uh, would think before we even go to a, to a public hearing. I mean, would that be something, just again, I'm sort of thinking here, would that be something that maybe could be useful? And if planning commission members want to come, obviously they can come, but uh, uh, that, that might at least give us an idea of, of what sort of concerns and quote unquote pushback we might get from uh, folks in that area. Well, maybe, uh, Head off one of these 1 a.m. meetings. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I, I can talk to Annette a little bit. Maybe that might be a, a, another uh, step that we could do here the next month or so uh, before maybe we get a, a formal application if that's something that you know, we think is a good idea. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. Maybe that's something well, why, I think. why would we not use that? Yeah, I mean, if it's at a public hearing, we're just going to say, let's just meet. meet Maybe that's something Tracy could head up for. Right. Exactly. And we had offered to do that, too. Right. We don't know how that possibility exists. Would that sound like something that maybe could be a step we could take here in the next uh, 30, 45 days? I would love to. I mean, uh, that's exactly our strategy. I mean, if you look at the slide right now, these are, these are actual pictures uh, of our meeting that we had with the community in Birdhaven. Shenandoah, and that's the property in the back, just to show the property so it's aware. We had multiple meetings with them. We had a lot of conversation, and we did adapt the project to their needs. Having natural streams, evergreens between us and the neighbors, way before the setback, way more than setbacks. We did a lot of work regarding the forest conservation and fire safety, hunting, pres hunting preservation, because mostly they were hunters. They were very much concerned because we were, in, we were surrounded by the national forest. We wanted to make sure that we're not hurting their hobbies and you know their interest in the area. Uh, so definitely, this is something we're very much interested in. And uh, honestly, we wouldn't move forward with the projects if we don't get the grant from the community. Okay, any other questions from the planning board? Okay, I'll work. I'll work to keep writing the loop by setting that up here. Uh, you know, sometime in the next month or so. Public comment at this point. 
Thank you. Thank you.